recently saw a video on YouTube that uh, challenged people basically to come up with the top 10 things, uh, good pieces of advice that a father could give to a son. And, you know, I thought that that was a pretty good challenge. And I thought about it, though, from a Bible-believing standpoint. Uh, there's a lot of things out there in the world that you could give that would actually be, you know, fairly good advice for a son out there. But um, I thought as a preacher, what would be, how would I answer that? And how would I answer it from Scripture? Not my own opinions. So I'm going to present the top 10 best pieces of advice for a son. Okay, now, you know, uh, I know a lot of you out there, younger men out there, and, and you don't have saved fathers. So as your holy father here, I will give you the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Not your holy father. But, you know, as just a preacher that's that's seen some things of the world and, and, and things, the Lord's shown me some pretty amazing stuff over the years. And I do have some experience out there in the world. i uh, worked for most of, you know, my 20s. I was saved when I was 25. So, you know, I some experience here. But uh, I'm going to just give you 10 pieces, best pieces of advice that I can give you as a young man, as a teenager growing up. And if you're a father out there and you have a son, you know, I, I would recommend these 10 or look up some other ones that you can give to your son. Number one, fearing God and not man. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. All right Now, if you grow up fearing God, then you aren't going to fear man, which means that you're going to do things to please God. And so you won't go out and get drunk and mess up your life. You won't get in with the wrong crowd. You won't you know, steal or cheat or lie or whatever else. Why? Because you know that you're accountable to God and you're going to fear God. So that one's the most important. Number two, learn to work with your hands, hand skills, things like that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28 says, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may have to give to, give to him that needeth. A good example of that would be you learn, you get up, you know, in years and things like that, get out on your own and you can go to some place and raise a garden and you grow enough food that you don't need all the food. Well, what do you do? Or even if you're a good hunter or a good fisherman or whatever, you know, you can have an, an excess bounty of food, know somebody that needs some food, you go give it to them. See? But even so, the thing of monetarily, if you're doing good and you're a good uh, conscientious man working in business, and you have that extra money, you can say, okay, I know that guy down the street's really having a rough time. I hear about some brother that, that lost his home or whatever and he and had no insurance or whatever else. I'm going to help him out. See? That's another really good thing to do. Number three, being content. There's a whole bunch of scriptures on this, but I just have Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Well, that's another one that's very important to understand. When you are content with what you have, and you're not always having to get more and more and more and more and more, what you live in there is you understand that God will take care of your needs there. It says, um, you know, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In other words, when you're relying on God, when you're working hard with your own hands, when you're fearing God and not man, see how the first two tie in there, and you're content, God will provide your needs. Even in rough times, God will come in, He'll step in, and He'll provide those needs for you. Another important piece of advice for you if you're a young man. Number four, honoring your parents. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 2 and 3 says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. Okay? Now, not only will you live longer in terms of years on the earth here, but um, I believe that your life will be better than what most people's is. Okay? You will live. You know, you can actually 
you know, live a life of death and dying and suffering down here if you're doing things wrong. You're always sick and things because of the lifestyle that you choose. And I realize, you know, don't get excited if there are people out there that are sick and you're doing right. Okay, I'm not saying that if you're sick that proves that you're wicked and sinful. I'm not saying that. But there are certainly people that live uh, over drinking, overeating, you know, smoking cigarettes all the time and everything. Um, interestingly, uh, one of the neighbors in this neighborhood here um, just lost his brother. He was 56 years old. Why? Cigarette smoking. Cancer got him. See? If you live after the flesh, you shall die. See? So when you honor your parents, you know, the Bible talks about that, that you will live long on the earth. You know? And, of course, if you're not smoking and things, if, you know, you, that means that you've feared God and you, you're trying to do right and, and whatever else. So... Uh, but next, number five, practice moderation in all things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Your moderation. Don't eat too much. Don't eat too little. Don't sleep too much. Don't sleep too little. Don't drive too fast. Don't drive too slow. You know, whatever. Moderation. Okay? Don't overwork. You say, well... Wait, I'm supposed to be this conscientious worker, Brian. I, you know, what do you mean, don't overwork? Well, I know of fathers that have destroyed their families because they work all the time. So as a young man, you've got to get that thing into your head. See, if you're content, then you don't need to overwork. You'll be content with your wages. You're not going to be lazy and show up late for work and do a really poor job, but then again, you're not going to be there working all this overtime, just overtime, 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 and you're never home and your family life starts to fall apart because all you do want to do is work. See? Moderation. Number six, don't worry about what you can't change. Okay? I didn't say don't think about it or don't listen to statistics about it or don't, don't research things that you can't change. I didn't say that. I said don't worry about those things that you can't change. Is the world getting worse? Yeah. What can you do about it? Can you stop the world from getting worse? Well, if you could stop the world from getting worse, then that would prove the Bible to be a lie. That's not going to happen. The Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You know, it's happening. Well, then we should worry about it. No, you shouldn't. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Careful. What is careful? Well, it can be kind of like you're taking, you know, being careful with what you're doing. It's some kind of a delicate type of operation or whatever, being careful. But there's another way that you can define careful, which is what this text right here actually is saying. And that is be careful for nothing. Careful. What do you do? Break it down. Full of care. When you're full of care, what are you doing? You're worrying. So it's like, don't worry about anything. Okay? That's what the verse is saying there. Be careful for nothing. By, by everything, by, but, every, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Be thankful. I'm getting ahead of myself here. Number seven, tell the truth and be honest. That's also going to be very important. You know, and you're going to learn that as you get older as a man. You're going to learn that there are times that you have a vehicle to sell and you know that there are some problems with that vehicle and it could affect the sale of that vehicle or that house or that whatever. And you put an ad in the paper or online or wherever and somebody comes to look at it and they say, does it have any problems? Um, well, uh, no, there's nothing wrong with it. You're lying. You know, one of the most difficult things to do is to say, um, yeah, it does. I'll be honest with you. Um, it does have a slow oil leak. And uh, look, come back here. See that right there? Yeah, that's that's uh, some Bondo right there I put over that. That's actually pretty rusted out. And I just have, have to keep putting Bondo in it, you know, and things, uh, you know, every year. And, and uh, you know, oh, I, I actually ripped the seat back here. See, that's difficult. Because sometimes you'll see the guy say, oh, okay, well, I don't think I'm interested. And they walk away. You just lost a sale. But you retained your integrity. You told the truth. 
But uh, the verse here is Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Okay? Another good piece of advice. Number eight, be thankful. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything gives thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Okay? In everything give thanks. That's also very, very important. Being thankful. You know, as a man, somebody comes along and they help you, you need to look the person right in the face and say, another man or whatever, and say, hey, thank you very much for your help. Thank you for this or thank you for that. And you shake their hand. Good, strong, firm handshake. Don't do some little limp dishcloth kind of thing or something like this. Good, firm handshake. Thank you. I appreciate that. Be thankful. Number nine, think before you speak. It's an important one. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 2. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. did a whole series of, or a whole message on this thing of, of not talking very much. You know, the old saying goes that you have two ears and one mouth. That means you should listen twice as much as you speak. And that's very, very good advice. Let's tell you a little story to illustrate my point. I've told this in other studies, but you know it just kind of shows what I'm trying to say here. And that is, I remember back when I was in my teens, I was working at a restaurant, and my job was to go out and clean the tables and clean the, the area where they had the ketchup and the mustard and the salt and the pepper and the napkins and whatever else. And um, so I was out there, and I'm cleaning things. And this older man comes over, and he's got his tray like this, in his left hand and he says to me he puts his tray over like this and he says excuse me young man he said could you please put some ketchup on my hamburger for me you know it had these these dispensers you push the thing down the ketchup comes out you know and, and he said could you put some ketchup on my hamburger for me and I was busy you know and I thought get it yourself you lazy old man or something but you know what I just thought hey uh, this is my job I'm here I'm, I'm here to serve the customers whatever and, I, and so I said oh yes sir and I, I said, put some on. I said, is that enough, sir? And he, was, he said, yes, thank you very much, young man. And he turned to walk away. And I looked at that guy. I don't know if he was in a war or what, but his arm was ended right there. He only had one arm. So he would have had to put the thing down and try to figure a way to put ketchup on it and everything else. I'm sure glad I didn't say anything to that man. Say, get it yourself. You're, you know, what are you, lazy or something? I'd have felt very foolish. You know, so if you're if you're quiet, you're not real outgoing and things and and arrogant with the way you speak. That's actually a good thing, <laughs> and you know you should be you know witness to people and things like that. I'm not saying you know never witness or anything, but let your words be few, and definitely think before you speak. And number ten, the ten best piece of advice that I could give to a young man would be live your life for others and not yourself. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14, And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. That's also very important. If you are living your life for other people, uh, if you're a young man and you're single, um, and you're, you're living your life in a way to honor your parents, uh, living your life in a way to uh, witness to the lost or, or whatever, um, that's good. And then you get married, now you have a wife to take care of. You know, she's there. She's your responsibility. And then you have children. Now you got even more responsibility. And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Uh, again, I can speak from, from experience there. Uh, I went for quite a few years of not having a wife to take care of. And it was like, you know, I just kind of lived for myself. And, and I drove around a lot of... Uh, fast cars and motorcycles and whatever else. And you know what? It didn't make me happy. You say, oh, you know, you get married, you have to give up all your toys and things like that. 
No, you have to give up a bunch of overpriced junk, <laughs> you know. I mean, now I have somebody to take care of, and she takes care of me. See, it's a, it's a wonderful relationship. But if you don't understand that early on, and you're just like, you know, and, and there, I'm not saying I was totally a greedy person either, you know, growing up either, you know. I did take care of people and help people and things like that. But if you're a, just a greedy young man, you're not going to amount to much. So those are the 10 be best pieces of advice I could give to any of you young men out there. If you're a father and you have a son, those are the things I'd recommend teaching them. You know, uh, definitely would help them. So just something to think about. And, of course, there's a lot more scripture that you could also use to uh, instruct a young man. But um, if you're saved, man, just it's about the book. I can't stress that thing enough. It's all about the Word of God. This is the most important thing that you have, and this is the guide that you should use to raise your family. So that will be it. Thank you very much for watching.